All right, everybody. Well, welcome aboard. We got Tommy Williams and the Tommy Williams Show coming at you live and direct. Let me get this cropped up a little bit. Don't want it to be too shabby. I want to make sure we have a nice tight set. My wife will have a fit. I want you to show the background. It's a green screen for a reason, fool. It's only supposed to be green. All right, so here we are. Okay. All right, my two guests have, have arrived. Uh, and I see they're backstage with the name spelled correctly. Thank you so much. Um, I have my, my guests for the evening uh, are none other than Herman Blues Macklin. He's my cousin. And I also have a good friend of my wife's uh, from Hampton University, also, also from uh, East Orange. She's an educator out in East Orange, my home state. Her name is Mylene Brown. So without further ado, folks, I'm going to go ahead and bring them on and welcome aboard there, Gina. Hope everybody had a great day. Well, all right. All right. Good evening. Good evening. How Let's are see you? What's going on? Let me get my volume up here. How's everybody doing? Doing good. I, I'm good. Just, just testing this thing out. You told me you might want me to sing, so oh, I'm sorry. Ladies first. Please go. No, no, no problem. <laughs> yeah, my Mylene, this is my cousin, my cousin Renzi. We call him Renzi or Herman or Blues. And uh, I'll tell you something. Uh, it's great to have him on. I'm thrilled to have the two of you on. Number one, because you know, after being in the school system for so long, I'm dedicated. I'm definitely dedicated to my to the youth. Um, and then I'm going to tell you the lead, the tie-in with my cousin as well, because you know we might say, you know, well he's, he's a musician. How are we going to have him on this segment of the show? But then we have my cousin Renzi, and I'm over here frothing. I should have brought a, a, a napkin to clean my side corners of my mouth. I'm just so excited about it. Um, so I have uh, my cousin on, and I don't know if you're familiar with this song. Remember, Love Injection, Always Love. On Mine. Well, here he is, right here. This is Bella. He was, was trying. You sound pretty good singing that, Tom. Oh, man. I'll tell you, I was listening to it this afternoon while at the park. I couldn't wait. I couldn't wait. This is one show that I was definitely, definitely all excited about. And then, uh, so we have my, my cousin, uh, Renzi Herman Blues Macklin, and we also have Mylene Brown. Like I said, she's a social worker, everybody. Social worker, and you can't give enough props out to the people who are behind the scenes, making sure everything is running right and his kids are, are feeling right. Because as you know, here in the channel, it's all about positive vibes and positive vibes are all about that feeling, folks. And, uh, you know, you wake up in the morning and, you know, you, you know that's when it all begins. So uh, we're gonna have a discussion right now. And uh, then later on, I'll share how my cousin's tied in with the youth as well. He does a fantastic job with the youth. So just to kick things off, I'm gonna go ahead and have uh, uh, my cousin uh, uh, go ahead and play a little something. It seems like he's all queued up. Now, listen, let me ask you something, Cuzzo. Um, yeah. Is this something that's gonna be, um, oh, okay, well, go ahead, man, do your thing. It's all uh, you, right? Uh, this, is, this, is a, this is a whole group we did years ago when we were tagging on the love injection, trying to figure out what we could do because that little line I did in the beginning of the song that said, I'm a boogie doctor, baby. You know, everybody was like, boogie doctor, you know, and so it, they said, we need to put out a song with just you rapping. I said, me rapping? I don't rap. I can't, can't do this. It's, no, just do it. Just do it just like you did the boogie doctor. So I'm going to give you a little, little bit of this thing that we did. Let me know if you can hear the drums here. Perfect, man. Am I coming through? You're coming through. All right. It's in the love socket. Come on now, rock. 
It's in the pocket, in the pocket, in the pocket, in the pocket, so you raw. It's in the love socket. Come on. Falling on you bad girls and you sexy Mary Jane. Such freaky hair and freaky clothes you drive to be insane. All you rappers that's into funk, let me hear you say go ahead. All you strengths that don't dig the funk, I guess you best they did. Cause all the show is coming. The breakdown and the rest. We're gonna find out very soon if you like it fresh. Come on now. All right. <laughs> all right, all right, man. Fantastic, fantastic. I'll tell you. It's a little fun, little fun song, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right. We're on the rise right here. So uh all right, man. You want to go ahead and uh, relax, relax your uh, guitar right there, and let's go ahead and get right into it. Okay, yes, sir. All right, let me um, try to see if I can change this format just a little bit because we are going to listen to Mylene as she goes ahead and lets us know what time it is in the schools out there, folks, because there's a lot going on, as you all are aware, uh, with the country, the globe, uh, as we uh, try to navigate ourselves through a very uncertain and very severe times and uh, borderline catastrophic, but you know, we have to remain in optimism. And so we can't lean on the negative because there's so many positive things going on on the planet as well. We can't uh, forego those things because this is our life and we will not get these days back. So um, I'm going to let you go ahead and please um, just introduce yourself and what you do. And um, I guess we could start off with the, with the initial question of um, how are things in New Jersey with regard to the pandemic and the government open, closed, and things of that nature? Well, good evening. My name is Mylene Brown, and I am a school social worker in the East Orange School District. I've been there for 25 years. It has been a wonderful experience working with children. I work with elementary and middle school children. Um, it's We have just we, we went back to school, our students came back on April 19th. And I must say that surprisingly, it's really gone very, very well. I think at this point, the students were used to wearing masks, used to social distancing, and they have really adjusted very well. Also for the teachers, um, the president, Joe Biden, and our governor, uh, Phil Murphy, also prioritized teachers for the vaccine. So the teachers are feeling uh, a lot more comfortable because of those two steps that were taken. Fantastic, that's super. Well, it sounds like things are letting up there. Um, I know that um, it's definitely, it's a difficult decision and it's a lot of pressures that the, that the uh, politicians are up against. I mean, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's, you know we, we look at things a lot of times through our lens because it's most comfortable, but um, there's a lot of pressures that are put on from everywhere from business owners to, um, education i mean that's a huge huge portion of the the state's funding um so there's a lot of things a lot of a lot of decisions that have to be rendered um based on data and um we sometimes have to look beyond just our households and what would what, what we feel personally might be the right decision um so sometimes we may not and I, this is my first time actually thinking this through because you know as you said and you, you said it with a spoonful of optimism that things were letting up and it sounds like good news and then i think about my state down here i'm in florida and our governor um, governor DeSantis, and his decision to um have people go back into normalcy and you know lifting up the ordinance or the, the rules on on um having to wear masks I think some decisions are kind of reckless. Um, I think that, you know, I think that, well, do you have to wear masks in, in Jersey? Let me ask you that because you might be synonymous with us. Do you have to wear masks? Um, just today, funny that you asked because just today uh, our governor lifted the outdoor mask mandate. However, he maintained the indoor mask um, and also he maintained it for public, uh, public and government buildings and public schools. So okay. the answer is yes. Yeah, and that's the same here. That's the same here. So it does sound about the same. So, you know, with uh, well, that that kind of pivots right into um, 
you know, the the uh, the savior of this whole thing, you know, as per the um, the medical field, which is the vaccination. Um, and again, we have um, we're in a democratic situation, so we choose to get the vaccine or not get it. Um, so have you been vaccinated, Mylene? I have been vaccinated. And okay. Absolutely. And, uh, but I understand that that's not for for everyone. And I, that's why I am in favor of continuing to wear the mask, because mm -hmm. I do believe people have a choice. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I got my shot. Fantastic. <laughs> Good, man. Yeah. Yeah. So um, and now uh, now in Virginia, this, this schools are open as well as well. Uh, Renzi? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The schools have been open uh, for quite a while. And the parents had the option to either send your child to school or do at home, which gave double duty for the teachers because they had to you know, teach in person and on Zoom at the same time or just do two separate classes or how yeah. they could make it happen. So that, that made it pretty tough to, to, to get all that together. And um, it, it's really been a challenge. It really has. Certainly. Yeah. So now you are, um, Mylene, you're right inside of the schools. And um, what's the, uh, would you say that, what's the population that's returned to school? Uh, they, have a, they have a model where it's uh, it, still some kids are online at home or everybody's brought back at this point? Uh, we have a hybrid situation where parents were able to choose whether they would like their child to remain virtual or participate in person. Mm -hmm. And I would say about, at my particular location, about one third of the students um, came back in person. Wow. Um, and we are at 25% um, per day capacity. So, um, but since we, um, we had such a low number, we only had one third that returned, we actually are allowing our students to come in every day. Wow. Except for Wednesday. On Wednesdays, we do deep cleaning. So we're um, what we call asynchronous. We have asynchronous learning where the students are given assignments um, to do and complete online. They do have yeah. access to the teachers, but um, we're not in live classes. Yeah, yeah. Now, did you all, I know we're coming to a close, the close of the school year. Did you all um, assess the students? Did your, did your students have the assessments, the state assessments and things? Uh, for, yeah. um, fortunately, we did not have the state assessment. The governor was, we were able to apply for a waiver um, we will be have to give the state assessment, but not until the fall. Um, however, we were um, we did give district assessments and are continuing to give district assessments um, to assess um, where our students are. Got and we're it. also offering a summer program um, based on that okay. data. Wow, that's fantastic! I was gonna, I was going to say, you know, if they if they hit them over the head with them in the fall with the test, you know, that's like after the summer. But they do have the option of. of uh, bridging the gap and staying nice and enriched with the uh, education and, and all that stuff that's going to be on the test. So that's super. I think that's I think that's a good model right there. I think that you know many other districts and across the the, the nation should have um, adhered to that because I know it gets difficult when your kids get uh, kids have um, the pressure of uh, being assessed on information that they don't really know. I mean, you know, I know that. Many students, um, you know, that are back in school now, yeah, they're back now, but they might have missed about a third of the information, you know, because they were at home, they weren't really focused, they had to, you know, share a laptop or deal with noise and confusion in the background and just deal with the uh, innuendos of them not knowing. I mean, this is all brand new for teachers as well. Absolutely. So it, it, is a, it is a curve yeah. and um, a curve that's not going to be met unless we deal with this even longer and then we don't want that. So, you know, hopefully we get back to the nor normal times. I think that, um, you know, that hybrid model was something that was, um, you know, pretty much well thought out, I, you know, just based on numbers. And like you said, that data is very important. You know, that numbers is numbers is everything, you know. Um, right. So, and they gave uh, teachers time to prepare. So they gave us two weeks to come into the building and to prepare. And mm -hmm. then our students returned. So that now, was important. Pri prior to um, prior to the return of the of, and then lifting. Um, uh, the, the gates and having the kids return. Were there a lot of cases of COVID going on at school? Were there? You know? No, not really. I must say, not 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 really. Yeah. No, um, there were a few. But no, um, I guess what they call outbreaks. Outbreaks. Yeah. It would be. It came from outside. Like someone would get it out from outside, but not bring it into the building. 
where yeah. it's where it spread. No, not, not I, at all. I was just, I was just rough. We had we had three or four cases a week, and our um, teachers were going out left and right with yeah. COVID. And it was a scary time because a lot of the teachers are old like me. <laughs> and it was yeah. just like, Lord have mercy. I was just, I'd be in 4-H clubs just to, you know, just kind of fill you in. And uh, so I work with youth all over the county from K through 12. The nice part about my job is I can decide not to do whatever I want to not do. So I had the option to just, I just went total Zoom. And everything that we did was Zoom the whole year. But the teachers had to be in the schools. But because I worked directly with the schools, I know exactly what they were going through. And they were calling me saying, Look, this and that, and I'm so stressed out. I don't know what I'm going to do, you know. And, and no no uh, vaccine was around at that time. At the beginning of the school year, we were getting a call every week, uh, please quarantine. And they list 25 or 30 names of students that need to quarantine for two weeks because one person in the class tested positive. It was tough. It was a tough one. And now now that some of them are going to face to face camp. So we're taking kids to a four H center where they'll be sleeping in bunk beds together, not side by side, but you know, in the bunk beds in the lodges with about, you know, they're saying keep it at four. And uh, it used to be eight kids per room, now it's four. So they're thinking maybe we cut back to four, that'll keep it down. The kids have to get tested before they come in. Um, if they don't get tested, they have to have parents signed that they quarantine for two weeks. So it, we, we've got a lot of guidelines in place and we just hope we make it through the summer without any, any, anything happening. Absolutely. It's a rough time. It's a rough time. But we're yeah, same here. We're having in-person uh, summer school, so. Oh, you are having okay. Good, good. Yes. Well, I mean, that's a uh, ooh in person summer school. Well, things you know, things are clearing up. So I so mm -hmm. it, it, it's all um, based on numbers. I'm sure they still have the and you know in person isn't going to be the same in person. I would imagine. Ab Ab Pop, no, not you know, at all. Population, you know, the social distance. You'll still practice some of those things. So absolutely, oh, no yeah. question. That's still good. Have mandate. Yeah, everything will still be in place. We have. Uh, Dividers and everything. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, we, we did the same thing. We're going to try to do as much stuff outside as we can, you know, and then that way the kids, if you, as long as you stay six feet apart, you can take your mask off and get a breather because you know it's going to be hot this summer. So that's that's going to be a bit of a challenge too. But uh, we're even going to serve meals at the picnic tables instead of in the cafeteria so they don't have to be all bunched up in there together. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. So tell me, um, how about the, um, with regard to um, the students and um, the emotional piece, is there, is there, do you find that there's a lot of, um, uh, I know the students have, um, there's a different, definitely a difference in students being able to communicate and socialize and things like that, that they're normally accustomed to uh, during the course of, course of a school year. So do you find that kids have some, some more emotional um, um, issues or, or things like that that they might have to address and they, they, they want to talk? Do you find that more students want to talk about um, what's going on through the pandemic? Um, to be honest, I, I didn't find that. It was surprising. They were very resilient. They were, it really didn't affect them as much as I thought it would. Uh -huh. um, they came back to school. Um, my younger students, the elementary students, they wear their masks. They understand. They they have you know we have arrows in the hallway. And I, I mean I'm very pleasantly surprised mm -hmm. that my students um, adjusted so well. Um, my middle school students, I the only thing I would say is they're a little bored because yeah. you know <laughs> yeah. they want to socialize. But again, overall, I, it really surprised me that it really was a very positive experience. For the students. And they find that they've been yeah. wearing the mask. That's the biggest thing. Everybody's compliant. So you don't find yeah. that sometimes we have nose riders who push it down and have the, the parasol. Right. And I thought there may be discipline issues and having to, you know, constantly put your mask on, pull your mask up. And I must say, I'm again pleasantly surprised. Um, we haven't really had that. I, and I think it's because of the time, because like I said, again, the kids are used to it. Yes. And like I said, I, most of them, I would say 90% of them are happy to be back in the building and, and willing to <laughs> yeah. do what they need to do to remain they, in the building. They are, they are our future. And you know what? 
something like, and, and I'm just thinking now, something like this, and because what you're saying of these kids being able to follow, you know, the guidelines, they're following the law. They're, you know, they're, it's crazy because they're doing something that we all have to do. And we talk about and preach about, you know, following rules and talking about when you get older, you're gonna have to follow rules. But you know what? We're all following the same rule. This is crazy how, you know, we're, you know, old, young, seniors, you know, babies, everybody's got to be in compliance and uh, compliance. And you know what, um, when they get older, you know, these will probably be, make some great politicians and some great, great advocates for, you know, social reform and, and different things like that, because these kids are really learning at an early, early age, the most important thing and the most, and the most, uh, the ser most serious uh, thing of all, because this could be the difference between life and death. Right, and we, so you know, it's such it's such a it's such a strong strong topic right now, and um, and it's nice to know that you have it. You're in a district that's getting it in a school system that's understanding the, the severity of it all. Because I'll tell you, there's some there's there's schools out, you know, down here even that that you know you, you get nervous, you know, because you know those students that 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 want to kind of treat it like ah it's nothing, you know. You know, if you're not serious now, when it, what what's going to be? You know, what does it take? You know, you have uncles, aunts, cousins, neighbors passing away. You know, you have your whole carrier route. You know, I was going to have a, I had a, um, I had a letter carrier, uh, um, uh, mail person uh, on my uh, podcast early on in the year, and. Um, he shared um, the fact that his route was totally different. You know, they had signs on the door, the people, you know, people were no longer there, they're no longer, you know, and it's just bananas. But um, yeah, so so that's that's good. So now how about like um, child study um, and, and doing um, IEPs and things of that nature, is that, is that changed? IEPs, individual. Um, we're, we're still doing our IEPs. We're, we're still doing everything. I mean, it's really amazing. I mean, it was, I won't say it was a, a difficult adjustment, yes. but I must say we do everything virtually. We have our IEP meetings uh, virtually. Um, I have had a few. We have some in person now, um, a few with the social distancing. Again, we go into a big room and spread out. Our, do our six feet apart. We have our mask on um, and we're not doing a lot of, um, you know, paperwork. So everything is like email, we email IEP, we email, report everything to parents and, you know, they go over it. And then, um, like I said, we meet um, virtually and I've had success. I've had most of my, matter of fact, I actually think I've had, I would say close to 90% of my parents come to my, uh, the, the new thing is our, our Google Meet. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they like it. They like and it. All the teachers come, it's just like a, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to drive anywhere. It's perfect, you know. They, sure. You meet more often, and and you know, you were talking about kids opening up and, and wanting to talk. When we had these Zoom meetings, sometimes it was, we were supposed to end at seven thirty, and here it is ten minutes to nine, and I'm like, hey, look, we gotta go. But they just want to keep on talking, and they're talking with each other. They're asking me questions, and I mean, it was just like a super mentoring thing that you couldn't imagine. You know, it just they was just so happy to be with people. Like you said, when they finally came back to school, hey, I'll wear the mask. I'll do anything you ask me. Just let me come back to school. <laughs> you know? right. Yes. And, and my district, is, in terms of counseling and uh, social work, um, you know, my district had a block of time, you know, from 1.30 to uh, 3 o'clock where the counselor, school counselors and school social workers and all support staff were available. And so the kids could come to us and talk to us during that time. And I had my own like my own classroom, my own um, meet where students could come and talk to me. And they did a lot of times. I mean, sometimes just this, we would, I met students' pets. I, met, <laughs> I found um, um, what their favorite uh, video game was. It, I mean, it, it, I, it really worked. It really did. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah, that, that was one of the things we were kind of concerned about, uh, y'all. And I don't know if, that, if this was in New Jersey too, but 4-H is like a safe haven for kids. You know, they, they come to us and sometimes we find out they're being abused at home. Sometimes it, that's the only place they get three meals a day is that 4-H. And so we were really concerned that, you know, not having camp last, some of the in-person camp that 
you know, some of these kids were really going to be in trouble. And and that's when, you know, he got a lot on the Zoom that, you know, they would they would hang around, you know, you know you'd see them, you know, like, okay, it's not only two people left. This 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 kid must have something he wants to ask me. So I would wait until later and then I'd shoot him a text and say, hey, man, give me a call. And we'd talk about what's going on at home and his life and everything. You know, we found out that some kids were having it pretty well. Yeah. Yes, I'm glad you brought that up because the students were able to email us and we could email them. So they were in constant contact with us anytime they if they needed help. I would, they could just say, Miss Brown, I need to see you. And I would email them back and say, OK, come to my Google Meet and I would be there and we would chat. Yeah, it means so much. It means so much to them. Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, how about um, with regard to um, the nutrition program, they, they, they have the cafeterias open, fully staffed, and 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 or how do they delve about the food in the cafeteria setting or to the homerooms? Well, for the virtual, while we were virtual, we have what we call grab and go. So we were feeding our students every day, um, breakfast and lunch. Um, if it was a day off, we would give them two or three bags um, the day before. You know, like if we were off on a Thursday, so Wednesday we would give bags for Wednesday and Thursday. So our students never went hungry. Um, and now, yes, um, my school is fortunate because we have two cafeterias. So what we, we do feed them in the cafeteria. We do have enough room. And what we do is we alternate um, our students going outside. So half the population goes outside while half the population eats. And then they switch off. Okay. Yeah, we uh, when school was totally closed, the uh, cafeteria workers teamed up with the school bus drivers because Prince George is so spread out. I mean, some kids take them 45 minutes just to get from home to school on the bus. So they would load the buses up with bag lunches and drive out to a central location so that the parents could come, you know, and wouldn't they wouldn't have to go so far. And some kids could actually walk to the bus and pick up the food, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. That's good that everybody's furnished with things. And for those people, um, we were talking some acronyms earlier. We said IEPs. That's the Individualized Educational Plan for the students. So that's very important. Um, has has anything um, changed in terms of the accommodations that the students may have, um, like in the classroom? Does any or everything stayed pretty much standard? Everything stays standard. We have what we call breakout rooms. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're in a in a big class and you need in what we call like individualized small group instruction, we had a breakout room where a teacher assistant or someone could take you into a breakout room and work with you. And we also had tutoring hours um, where you could meet with the teacher individually. Very good. Nice. Nice. Well, it sounds like they're getting highly accommodated. It's great. Mm -hmm. So and also I wanted to tell you all um, 4-H, the 4-H club. Now, the 4-H club. Um, Marlene, are you, um, does, does Jersey still have the 4-H club or are you familiar with 4-H club still going um, on? Not very familiar, but yes, they do. Do you remember, oh, really? remember, from, back, do you remember from back in the day? Like, <laughs> I remember it from back in the day when they used to be like the 4-H club's going to be over at, you know, the local school and you go over there and you get your bicycle registered and get, you know, the decal. They give you a big old pennant on the back of the bicycle and it was like sticking a, like a mile high in the air and they'd have you riding it out of the cones to see if you could almost get like a license to ride. Right, like, right, right. Oh man, it was classic in the 70s. But um, yeah, that's fantastic that they're still around. It's like, you know, uh, organizations like that, you want to just make sure that they prevail and they always stay around because that that that's the core of, um, that was like the fiber of America back in the day you know, um, organizations like that in, in, in the inner cities, organizations like the Fresh Air Funds and the Fresh Air Kids, you know, that was very important, you know. And, uh, you know, so all those, big shout out to all those old classic organizations that are still around. I mean, you know, you, you know, they're fantastic. And it's super dynamite that you're still with an organization like that, Herman. Yes, indeed, thank you. I, I love 4-H, you have a saying, 4-H for life. You know, once once you're in for it, you're in it for life. So you're always welcome. If you want to come down and sing around the campfire with us this summer, come on down the week of July. The first week of July. I'll be yeah. I'll be happy to have you. <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, you know, I um that's like a scouts. You know, scouting used to be a thing of the past. It was a thing of the past, but you know, I used to be in scouts. My sister used to be in the scouts. 
you know, now it's like oh, corny scouts. Who's wearing a uniform in school? I used to have my beads on, patches, yeah. you know, swimming patch, campfire, <laughs> all kinds of stuff that I did, bow and arrows, you name it. I was just climbing with you know, rock throwing, skipping, and climbing trees. It just made yeah. you, you know, it, it was a great way of just uh living life, and it was unity back then, you know. Oh, yeah. The nice thing about 4-H, it kind of fills in the gap. Uh, we do, you know, we do the stuff that you don't do in school, and it's like hands-on. You know, you can actually see the thing and touch the thing where, you know, kids can actually go to the river and scoop some stuff out and, and look at it under a microscope or, you know, actually go take them fishing. You'd be surprised how many kids have never been fishing and never seen a cow face-to-face -face. or, you know, just... Uh, just those type of life experiences, you know, learning how to cook and all kinds of stuff like that. And we we incorporated in 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 with the research and all that, that we do. So they're they're learning, but it's kind of a sneaky way of getting it in there. They're learning all kinds of life skills, but they think they're just having fun. You know, just like you with your bike, you learn how to go with your car register, get your driver's license and all that. Just in that one experience it was like a you know like you were playing the game of, you know, being an adult doing that, you know, with your car. So yeah. kids always come to me and say, hey, look, it was that public speaking thing that got me got me over the hump. You know, that's what gave me the courage to stand up in front of the board and give my speech that made me to, you know, get that new position or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But, oh, yeah, let me retract that statement, too. Due to COVID restrictions, we can't have any visitors that camp this summer. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. I just thought about that. I said, wait a minute, this is recorded. Let me just retract that one. <laughs> we have a dozen people coming down there. You said we could come. You know, <laughs> no visitors. That's that's one of the things that, that we're trying to do to try to, you know, control, have a controlled environment, almost like the NBA or these college basketball teams and whatnot. You know, just once you get there, you can't leave. I mean, if you leave, you can't come back. You're not having any going out to your baseball game or you got to run home. If once you get here, you stay here because we don't know who you might be in contact with when you yeah. go out. That's fantastic. Yeah, those that would have been, We might have might have had better luck if we had turned all the schools into boarding schools yeah. and just made everybody stay right there. But Virginia State has had a time, too. I'm right here by the university, and my wife is the main rec coach. So she has seen some – she has seen an interesting year, too. And those, you know, kids coming back on campus and just trying to keep control of this thing. It's been a real challenge. Yeah. You have to have her on for a conversation, man. I'll be talking to you. Okay. That'd yeah, be, sure. Be be glad cool, to. Yep. So um, now, Mylene, you are uh, going to, to Hampton, right? You had attended Hampton? I'm, I'm, I went to Rutgers University. Oh, okay, okay. You know that that's what that's what that's what and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And it's okay, I no, it's fine. It's fine, I understand. You had to R U. Oh, you had to R you had to R U and I'm bugging. Yes. I'm, so, I'm so used to my wife like shoving okay. people on me. She's like, I got somebody else to come on the show. I'm like, who another ham thing, no, right? <laughs> so we hey, share, Rutgers. we are we are sisters. Yes, you are. Yes, I know. Yeah, sisters. But yeah. I went to Rutgers University for my undergraduate degree, Douglas College, and I went to uh, Fordham University for my master's of social work. Fantastic. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, brilliance. And, you know, you can't ask for more than that, I tell you. You know, just a strong leader out there representing and carrying the torch high. You know, it feel real safe having you in the school system, too. Um, so let me ask you, um, with regard to the, um, the vaccine, uh, what do you think about now the kids are having it? The kids are getting a vaccine. My kids are 16. I think they lowered the age to 16. Is that there in Virginia as well? Right? Yeah. Yeah, that's well, right. Pfizer just um, approved 12 to 16. 12 to 16. Uh, well, 12 to 15, I should say, because it was okay. already 16 and up. Now, so now the Pfizer is approved for 12 to 15. You're in, you're in an elementary to middle or you're just in a Yes. School? So you have some students there that have gone and taken the vaccine? That, that I'm, not, I'm not sure about. Um, yeah, but yes, I do have students that are definitely eligible for the vaccine. Eligible, yes. sure, sure. Yeah. Yes, how about that? Well, you know, that hey, it would be helpful for teachers, you know, to feel more comfortable. But Certainly. again, that's a, a personal decision. Yes, yes. Well, so uh, folks, you know, I want to um, try to look for, at some takeaways at this juncture. You know, I could sit here all night 
and have a conversation, but that would be selfish of me, you know, and, and not only that, but these are actually friends of the show. So there'll be times that Mylene will be coming back on and Herman will be coming back on the show to entertain. And, you know, as you hear, you know, they, they multitask, you know, Mylene is not just a, a social worker, but also she's very much in tune with what's going on with the, with the state, you know, and uh, what else do you have going, Mylene? I might be missing some things. What, what else do you, do you have hobbies and things that you do on the outside that you're into, reading a book club or anything like that? Um, I am also a um, member of a sorority. And okay. uh, lots of, we do uh, community service, service to all mankind. Service to all mankind. <laughs> I, um, over the summer, I volunteered a lot of volunteer work um, with food distribution. So um, I would say community service and also a member of First Baptist Church of Lincoln Gardens. Fantastic. Pastor. See that? <laughs> all Pastor. right. Pastor. Pastor. <laughs> okay. All right. And there, and, there, and there you have it, you know. And she's not just my wife's uh, sister. She's also my sister as well. Um, I'm Alpha, as you all know, Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, you know, hence the black and gold. You got the pink. I was gonna put some green in there too, and I, you know, I actually I should have done it all. You know, I have some more, some more proper. Now, this is one of my, um, one of my pieces of merchandise, everybody. Um, so, you know, I do these positive vibes, hoodies, uh, t-shirts, masks. Um, I have my morning time mugs. I do with positive vibes, and uh, and that's what it's all about. So, I think this has been a fantastic time. I want to get. Um, you both to um, give us a takeaway. Like what, you know, we have a lot of parents that are on here, a lot of single parents, a lot of parents, um, kids are in the school system. Any type of takeaways to help kids kind of keep it all together during these rough times, anything that they can do or any kind of best practices or anything you can give us takeaway, Mylene? I would just say um, communication and communicate with the school, communicate with the teachers. Um, and definitely uh, the support staff, your school counselor, the school social worker, uh, we are here for you. And if there's something that you need, please reach out to us. We will be more than happy to help you. Yes. We have a lot of resources that you may not be aware of. Mm -hmm. We have a question. How has this experience changed the way we will educate? How, how has this experience changed the way we will educate? Um, well, uh, what do you think on that note? I can say, oh, go ahead, Molly. No, you can go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, the thing that I've said, we, we reach so many more kids with 4-H because, you know, we're not, we are in the school, but we're also in the community. And meetings that we normally might have over at Virginia State or in one of the community centers, you might have 15, 20, 25. And then on a, you know, a good week with camp, we might have 300 kids down there for that. But the other meetings are usually 20, 25, or 30 or 30 people maybe, you know. But when we're doing it on this virtual platform, we have so many more people. I mean, we had one meeting that normally you might have 25 people. We had 310 people. My goodness gracious, people from Nevada and people from California that would never have, you know, had an opportunity to, to be in on that educational program that we were offering had we just offered it in a building somewhere in Virginia. So it, it has opened the door for us to, to reach so many more people. So I see it changing to the point that every time we do a program now, it's going to have to be hybrid, meaning we're going to have to do it in person but have a person there with the camera streaming Facebook Live or YouTube or something the whole time yes. so that it's accessible to all this big audience that we've just acquired during um, the pandemic. Yes, and on that note, I just think that um, technology, 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 computers, I mean, how important is how important are computers and access to the internet? So I definitely think um, uh, what we call future ready, we definitely need future ready schools and we definitely need a one-to-one -one ratio with uh, computers and the internet. That was our biggest struggle in the beginning of the pandemic, getting our students connected. And definitely yes. I agree also the parent participation, I definitely agree our board meetings, our PTO meetings, the attendance went way up because the parents were able to um, view it from their home. 
So I think that, as you said, they should continue that as an option for all parent meetings. Continue that virtual option. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that um, this session was fantastic. We definitely opened some eyes. And um, I think that parents' involvement, I think that the students being able to feel comfortable, you know, and I, and I think that the state's been doing their job. And I've, I've you know, actually, I still have Pandora um, from New Jersey tapped into my phone. So it gives me a little t taste of home when I'm doing my run and things. And there's, I know that there's a some sort of line, the VAX, they do VAX, something 800 VAX. And I, I thought it was something different, but it's VAX for vaccine. And and I was um, going to call that number and see if I can get a representative to come on, but I said, I don't know, let me just kind of chill. Um, but, but you know, um, but I think that it's great that people remain educated. We're all students. Everybody just took, all of a sudden pulled up. They, they were, hey, by the way, I heard that they're um, thinking about changing the um, freshman and sophomore to first and second year students. Have you heard about that? So, um, and, and I don't know if that's going to be something nationwide or whether it's going to be something, I think it is nationwide. That in, instead of having freshman and sophomore mm -hmm. and, you know, then junior and senior, they're going to talk about, no, they're going to go to first year, first year college students, second year, third year, and fourth year uh, student, huh. which is a whole nother thing um, to discuss. But at any rate, I think that, you know, students, um, students definitely need to be comfortable to speak to those qualified people and everybody's not qualified. So I think a lot of times that, you know, if you don't feel comfortable, you know, speaking to your child about, you know, certain issues, send them to the specialists. They go to school and they work hard at attaining that paper to admit, to have them certified and qualified to take care of those fires, to put out those fires and assist your child. So lean on the proper people, folks. Um, and thank you so much, uh, Mylene Brown, for coming on. Um, if you want to share some, any, any type of, um, media or anything that you want to share, you know, you can, you can let me know, you can text me or email me and I'll make sure I get it in the link in, uh, in our, in our uh, channel. Okay. Okay. Thank you. It was fantastic having you on. Thank you so much. And a pleasure. Night. Absolutely. Yes, thank you very, nice. very nice meeting you too, my lady. Yes, you too. And thank you. And I really enjoyed the music at the beginning. Yes, thank you. I enjoyed chatting with you too. Tommy, thank you for bringing me on here. This has been great. You're welcome, man. And then let me ask you, did you have any other um, numbers that you had in mind? or? Well, that no, that was basically the, the, the coup de grace right there. Okay. I was the <laughs> you know, I'm going to squeeze on you, man. I'm going to squeeze on you. Because <laughs> you're good, man. I'd be glad to do another one, though, if you really want me to. I certainly do, man. See if I can grab take us my out. <laughs> Man, take us out. Go on. Take us out. <laughs> That's my cousin right there. I'll tell you, when I was at Virginia State, oh man, I met, I, I, I got up with this guy here and he just was, he was fantastic. I was on his front doorstep so many times. Hey man, uh, you know, I, I need you. I need you, man. You know, he's right there. Like the big hey, it, made, it made me feel good. You know, I was glad to have you. Yeah. It's, man. it's good to feel needed, you know, when you can yeah. help somebody out. Sure. You were like my little brother. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, man. All right, let's see here. Let me find the, find the track. Bear with me just a second. Sure, man. Mm -hmm. This is a... Got anything? Uh, don't hear anything yet. You turn it up a little bit. Yes. No. Not getting it. Any any way to get the speaker down by that? Huh? Any way to get the microphone down by uh, device? Well, it's actually supposed to be going right in the uh, right in the USB port. Huh. Let's see. Well, I'll just do it. Can you hear the guitar at all? 
Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. We just want to get me and the guitar in. This is a little song I wrote. It's talking about uh, feeling airy. And uh, I've got a reggae band called the Tunji Reggae Band. And uh, this song is all about feeling good because you're doing good, living right, and doing right, and treating each other right. And it's called Keep the Feeling Airy. Mm -hmm. And I just spell it out. I R I E I R I R I E I R I R I E I R I R feeling I R feeling I R is a mental state means you're feeling great when you're feeling I R pass it on to those you know you reap what you sow. When you're feeling irate, I R I E I R I R I E I R I R I E I R I R feeling I R. Now you're feeling good, like you know you should, and you're feeling I R. Tunji band got you rocking, really rocking, and you're feeling irate. Come on now, I R I E I R E. Sing along, I R I E I R E. I R I E I R E. I R E feeling I R E. I R I E I R E. I R I E I R E. I R I E I R E. I rain. All right. <laughs> All right. Sensational. I, I wasn't ready for that one. That was a little high. Hey, that's all right, man. I need to get my get warmed up before I sing something. Like <laughs> <that>. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll warm you up, man. I'll have you up plenty of time. <laughs> hey, so the two of you, thank you so much for coming on. It was a wonderful show, and you both are now deemed friends of the show. Open door policy. All right. All right. You've got the all key. Right. All Thank right, y'all. Take care. God bless you both. All right. All right. Bless you too. Thanks again. All right. Take care, folks. All right. All right.